Forces election operations launched in Hagen. Election success depends on security. And PNG and Vietnam in new bilateral relationship. This is National MTV News with Helen Sayer. Good evening and thank you for joining me for Friday's news. 137 public servants and ex-servicemen have joined the East New Britain Police to provide order during the elections in the province. The 137 personnel will be ranked as special constables for the duration of the election. The contingents are currently put on a three-week-long training to understand their policing roles during the election. Edwin Fidelis reports from Kokopo. This is the group of men and women, most of them are public servants who haven't gone through the formal police training at Bomana, while some of them are retired servicemen. They all have put their hands up to support the work of police during the elections in this New Britain province. They are going through a three-week-long training to ensure that they perform according to what the police IREC is expected, just like the rest of the police officers. The New Guinea Islands Assistant Commissioner of Police, Anton Billy, says at the end of their training, they will be ranked as special constables to assist police officers to carry out police duties. They will have the power to charge and do arrests of lawbreakers. It will be a very uh, intensive training within the three weeks to learn as much as they can so that they will assist the uh, regular police in the polling duties in the province. But that is not all. The New Guinea Islands Police Board says if they perform well during the election, they may have the chance to retain their ranks as special constables and join the police force. During the opening of their training on Wednesday, they were given a warning by the East New Britain Provincial Administrator Wilson Matava, who told them not to misbehave. BBC will report to my office whether you public servant you have committed yourself. If you have not committed yourself to this 10 days training, public, from my office, we will deal with, deal with you as a public servant. I call for professionalism in demonstrating your responsibility out in the field. The provincial administrator's warning comes amidst the backdrop of ill-disciplined police officers who have tainted the image of the PNG Royal Constabulary and those who misbehave during their line of duty will be dealt with accordingly, the provincial administrator says. Edwin Fidelis, National MTV News, Kokopo. Chief Secretary Isaac Lupari said success of the national election depends on the security forces. Lupari says though all national elections are managed by the Electoral Commission, it is members of the three disciplinary forces who will ensure elections are safely and successfully conducted. Tekla Gunga is also in Mount Hagen and files this report. In the parade today, members of the Joint Security Task Force were challenged to remain neutral during the polling and counting periods. They can stop you here. I said they stop throughout Papua New Guinea. Blue, green, orange. You got big player challenge, the big player responsibilities that will handle you. No one one law commander will you, one one law officer. At least 3,000 members of the three disciplinary forces will be providing security in the Highlands region. The Highlands region has been identified as the most risky area for the elections. Because of this, the Joint Security Forces are keeping a close eye in this region. Already there has been election reported offences to the Highlands Police. Now the members on this parade have been encouraged to make sure that election related offences are minimised. Similar focus will be given to other major towns like Port Mosby, Glay and Kokopo. Especially in the islands, islands is uh, regarded as a uh, hotspot area. Uh, so in, in most of the islands provinces, we will see increased number of police uh, uh, deployed to islands to support the work of uh, election in the, in the islands region. While election security remains the focus of the Joint Security Task Force, members of the public have been urged to respect the law and conduct campaigning or vote in an orderly manner. This operation will run for the next two months until the declaration of elected members 
and the formation of the new government. Tekla Gunga, National MTV News, Mount Hagen. Pangu Party parliamentary leader Sembasil accused the central bank governor of professional negligence at a press conference yesterday. Basil says if Pangu forms government after elections, they will sack central bank governor Loy Bakani because he didn't do a good job. Today, the bank of PNG governor Loy Bakani described the accusation by Mr. Basil as wild allegations, saying there is no need for a response and that he is not accountable to Basil. Bethany Harriman with this report. Pangu Party has fired a broadside at the central bank governor late yesterday afternoon. Deputy opposition leader Sam Basil says Bakani will be held accountable for his role in deals made by the PNC-led coalition, which include the UBS loan, the LR generators, the stolen paper notes, the declining foreign exchange, and allowing commercial loans to be given to state-owned entities. It's the paper notes. The paper note story is just that a story to cover up a large discrepancy of the, proposed, of the process associated with removal of the currency from the system, like the demonetization. If the story of stolen containers was true, where is the global incident report issued by Bank of PNG? MTV understood that these were serious allegations being laid against the Bank of Papua New Guinea governor and approached Mr. Bakani for a response. In an email to MTV, the governor said, and I quote, no response to any wild allegations. I'm not accountable to him to respond to his allegations. Basil's scathing remark yesterday comes after the central bank governor told political candidates to leave the affairs of the economy for the bank to handle. Basil's outburst also comes when the Prime Minister Peter O'Neill assured the country on FM 100's talkback show yesterday that the economy was doing well according to international reviews and he called on the opposition to come out with policies and not personal attacks. But our economy is still too small. We must expand the economic base. We have to continue to invest in infrastructure that will enable tourism, that will enable agriculture, and all the other resource development opportunities that we have in the country. So uh, I know uh, sometimes it's easy for candidates to just say, I promise the world, and, and uh, uh, after five years you have a hard time explaining to your people why you have not delivered. So uh, make less promises, stand on uh, your integrity, allow the people to make their choice, and uh, you will get to parliament and we will work together. But... The elections have brought out the best, and also at times the worst in campaign rhetoric, Sitting MPs and candidates have been going after the People's National Congress coalition, at times calling out senior bureaucrats with allegations, which for the most part are unverified. MTV understands that it is elections, and those in the political arena will attack each other openly in the media. It's less than a month till campaigning ends, and it comes back to the people who will vote for the type of government that will represent them in parliament and make decisions about the country. Bethany Harriman, National MTV News. PNG National Party began its southern region campaign in northern province. PNG NP parliamentary leader Karenga Kua visited Popandeta to support two candidates, prominent constitutional lawyer Erastus Kamburi and senior public servant Kibul Bonga. Kamburi is running for the Ijivitari seat while Bonga for Sohe. PNG National Party has completed its Momose region campaign rally and is now in the southern region. Arriving in the small town of Popondeta, the PNG NP delegation was greeted in style. Pa Party leader Karenga Kua gave a rundown of PNG NP's relationship with Northern Governor Gary Jufa. He says people must vote leaders who can fight for the small people. We have not endorsed a governor's candidate. We believe that he's done a fantastic job and he ought to continue. I am not passing judgment. I am not passing judgment on how he has performed this in oro. That's a matter for you people to decide. But I'm bringing to you his report card at the national level. The former Justice and Attorney General Minister said the country is economically helpless, but there is hope in this election for a change of government. This is your opportunity to make sure that you vote in two National Party candidates out of Oro to march 
lead to the front line with your governor. That's all you need to do. Prominent constitutional lawyer Erastus Kamburi is contesting the Ijivitari open seat. He says the province has had many missed opportunities due to political differences and PNGNP hopes to restore that loss. We are bringing to you that promise of growth and change so that this province can realize its full potential and take its rightful place in this country. Kamburi's message to the people, vote for a better future. 2017 is the time that we are going to go to the poll with our children in mind, not me, me, me. PNG National Party will visit Million Bay Province for its next campaign rally. Jack Lepave, Jr. National MTV News. When we come back, Marata residents capture a three-meter-long crocodile, launch of NCD's wastewater management project, and groundbreaking for a new courthouse in Wewek. Stay with us. Welcome back. Residents in Port Moresby's Marata 2 have netted a 3.2 meter long crocodile. The crocodile was floating in a drain behind residential areas when it was spotted by youth. Residents quickly blocked off the drain and attacked the reptile. After an hour, the giant creature was carried out of the drain. Residents say this is the second crocodile caught in the same area. Today saw the official launching of the NCD Wastewater Management Project. The project is being facilitated by Japanese agency JICA and water company Edaranu. The project will be completed in 2018. Joanita Nonwa with this report. At present, Port Mosby does not have a wastewater treatment plant. This leaves raw waste being disposed into the sea, which then becomes a threat to the natural environment, including the people. The project plant will be constructed in Kilakila on the outskirts of the city. The uh, Kilakila, Joyce Bay, that's where the treatment plant is. And we have also branch lines connecting into the main line, the main sewer line, which is about another 12 kilometers. The sewage treatment plant will treat 18,400 cubic meters of wastewater per day. Having this project in place will improve efforts made in protecting marine life and the natural environment. This may also promote healthy living and hygienic practices. We need to change our sanitary habits and uh, connect to a proper sewer system so that you discharge your waste in an environment friendly manner and you, it's for the good of uh, uh, common good of all people and for the environment and it's a public health issue that we, we discharge waste in a good way that we don't pollute the environment. This is also in line with Adaranu's ongoing upgrade of the sewage system, POM SSUP. The project will be a symbolic one for PNG and Japan as it is implemented in the close collaboration between the two governments. The three-year project, which will be completed in 2018, will see a new standard of water waste management being carried out for National Capital District. Joanita Nonwa, National MTV News. A groundbreaking ceremony was officiated today to mark the start of building a regional courthouse in Wiwek, East Sipic Province. Officiating at the ceremony were Chief Justice Sir Salamo Injia and East Sipic Governor Grand Chief Sir Michael Somare. The 20 million kina courthouse project, once completed, will serve East and West Sipic, including Manus Province. The courthouse will be built next to the provincial headquarters at Wiwek's Kriya Heights. This is the second time a groundbreaking ceremony was held to build a regional courthouse in Wiwek. Initially, the project started in 2004. However, funding constraints did not allow the project to be completed. Today, the Grand Chief Sir Michael Somare was given the honors to break the ground for a new regional courthouse said to be worth over 20 million kina. During his speech, Chief Justice Sir Salomo said building new infrastructures is important for the judicial system. He said with proper facilities, court services will improve. This facility is one of many projects that the higher and the lower judiciary together have put in place to bring about or improve service delivery in the area of judicial services. 
the Wilwek Regional Courthouse, once complete, will serve three provinces. This is one of four regional courthouses that have been built around the country, all of which are aimed at modernizing PNG's court system. We are making significant progress in terms of building the capacity of the courts, both higher and the lower courts, together, in particular in terms of court facilities. With better facilities being built, the Chief Justice said there is need to build the human resource capacity of the judicial system. He said more lawyers, magistrates and judges are needed throughout the country. The Grand Chief said Michael Somare, who announced that this was his final official duty for Isipik province, thanked the government and the judicial arm for considering Isipik in building the modern court facility. We are really, really privileged to put a courthouse in a place like this, when you have the east wind blowing and west wind blowing, and you have your judges overlooking the waterfront. It's a marvelous sea. I'm sure that the judges who will be sitting here looking at the sea, first time they come in the morning, they'll know. It comforts their heart when they make major decisions about peace. Peace in the mind and peace in the heart when take decisions on those of us who, who would be convicted. The project is set to be complete by October next year. Stanley Over Jr., National MTV News. A former personal assistant to the Deputy Chief Justice was yesterday arrested for fraud in Port Moresby. 26-year-old Rachel Tony from Hula in the Rigo District of Central Province was charged with one count of obtaining goods by false pretense. Tony was accused to have signed a hire car rental agreement valving over 25000 on behalf of NJSS for the Deputy Chief Justice to use for a 30-day period. Police further alleged that the vehicle was not returned after the 30 days lapsed. Upon confrontation, it was revealed that no authority was given by the National Judicial Services and staff to hire a vehicle. The alleged offence was committed between April and May this year. Papua New Guinea has entered into a new bilateral relationship with Vietnam. With the signing of the MOU on fisheries in Port Moresby, the pathway has opened to further strengthen collaboration between the two countries. Vietnam's interest in PNG is largely in fisheries. As a nation that is one of the fastest growing economies in Southeast Asia, the fisheries sector makes up the fifth largest contributing sector in Vietnam's economy. The MOU that was signed yesterday was specifically on fisheries. We will both work together in looking at areas of cooperation within this year. And then we've discussed that uh, from next year onwards we'll be implementing some of these arrangements under the MOU. The Vietnamese head of delegation said through an interpreter that Vietnam has a lot to offer to PNG. Vietnam do very well about the aquaculture and processing. So we welcome your side can um, exchange the information, the knowledge and technology. That's uh, Vietnam have advantage and uh, experience. Thank you. On illegal, undetected and unreported fishing, this MOU is the start of more discussions. Uh, but what, what we saw is uh, basically setting up the framework, which is already in place through the uh, Memorandum of Understanding, and then we will dialogue on the strategies uh, and the way forward in how uh, we can work together in combating IUU. Hotline is one of the, those that we've identified but I think it requires a bit more dialogue between us uh, to finalize. Mr. Tam said the government of Vietnam does not support illegal fishing by Vietnamese vessels in PNG waters. We will cheat very strictly with the owner of the vessel and also for the captain who is um, go to the abroad sea water. And um, I am to say the information that in the future we will cooperate not only in the PNG but for the other country uh, near the Vietnam in the fishery cooperation. 
He said their discussions with the two Vietnamese prisoners confirmed that the illegal fishermen are from poor, uneducated backgrounds. Further discussions between PNG and its new partner have one major obstacle, the language barrier. This first bilateral was made possible through a Vietnamese interpreter who was part of the Vietnamese delegation. With the start of this new relationship, PNG may now have to invest in learning the Vietnamese language. Sarah Aupong, National MTV News. Employees of the Tunnel Engineering Limited, subcontractor to developer PNG Hydro Limited, have removed a blockade at the entrance of the newly constructed Edevu Hydro Water Diversion Tunnel in the Karukuhiri District of Central Province. This comes after the developer agreed to address the outstanding grievances. Workers claim they have been underpaid and were only given 20 kina bonus to complete the 478-meter diversion tunnel. to talk to them and to find out the issue. And uh, I think that's also one of the good things for, for the project, as me, as we, we, we saw it. I can understand a bit, uh, I can talk PT, I understand PT. And uh, so, so sh in a short time, I, I comprehended what's the issue. Mm -hmm. So I achieved <coughs> the understanding that they themselves opened the uh, open the blockage for us. Uh, yeah, so. I feel sorry for it, so for, for you everybody to stay in the tunnel or longer. Yeah, the, but also I, I feel uh, grateful that you also exp uh, this express uh, their, their uh, project express the problems uh, uh, every now and then. And it depends on the management who, who can handle it problem. And the, so I realize we uh, as, uh, as the developer we have to manage the, the contractor. Yeah, who has to educate them because I think they're talking about the communication issue and the, also the understanding of the, uh, the, <coughs> the staff. And they, they, they are actually, uh, uh, actually they want a bit celebration, a bit uh, appreciation for the, for the work they have done. And now looking at our finance news, the Kina closed unchanged at 0 0.3145 US dollars in the interbank markets. At Bank South Pacific, Yokina was buying 0 0.307 US dollars, 0 0.4093 Australian dollars, 0 0.2706 Euro and 34.03 Japanese yen. Looking at commodity prices at New York close, gold and coffee closed higher while cocoa and copra closed the day lower. Palm oil, crude oil and copper closed the day lower. And on the stock market, the Dow Jones closed at 70.53 points higher, the ASX closed at 38.63 points lower, and the All Ordinaries closed at 38.08 points lower. Stories making headlines overseas when we come back, including torture of Iraqi civilians suspected of connections to ISIS and the latest on the Manchester bombing. Stay with us for details. Welcome back to the news. Turning overseas, disturbing images and footages of torture have emerged from behind the lines of U.S. elite Iraq forces fighting ISIS. A photographer assigned to follow the unit says he was sickened by the acts of torture on civilians. These dramatic battlefield pictures were made by an Iraqi photojournalist, Ali Arkadi, expecting to document the heroics of Iraqi soldiers working with the U.S. against ISIS. They are against ISIS and they are very strong. But Arkady says he soon came to learn the soldiers he was embedded with for months <laughs> of what's called the Emergency Response Division were no heroes. And tonight, he is revealing the graphic images licensed by ABC News that he captured of these important U.S. allies carrying out the torture and murder of civilians, only some of which is suitable for broadcast. Was this happening all the time? It's happening all the time. This man, he says, was a sheep herder whose teenage sons were suspected of working for ISIS. There's not even a pretext here of torture in the name of obtaining intelligence. This is just torture for fun. Sadistic. 
sadistic. In a remarkable phone call with us, the unit captain, Omar Nazar, admitted the video was real and said he was proud of what was seen on the tape. I'm already a star, he said, and Ali would make me a bigger star by doing this. The soldiers were so proud of what they were doing, they even sent Arkady horrific phone videos they shot themselves, showing victims they had tortured and murdered. And I don't even have words for it. That's a murder. That's a murder. In a statement, the American embassy in Baghdad told ABC News the U.S. has not provided military aid, arms, or assistance to the unit. Yet senior U.S. military officials in Iraq have praised the unit again and again. And it has been a, a really a fruitful a partnership uh, in, uh, in all regards. U.S. President Donald Trump has described leaks by U.S. intelligence officials about the Manchester bombing to American media as disturbing. British police temporarily stopped sharing information with the U.S. about the deadly suicide attack, but their changes have now resumed. A moving show of solidarity across the U.K. A moment of silence for the victims of the Manchester terror attack, including 14 children still in the hospital. Who had enjoyed the concert, presumably. Yeah, it was really good. Surprised today by a visit from Queen Elizabeth. She's lovely. It's just like mind-blowing, really. Like you just wouldn't really expect it. And as the nation stood united in silence, British police intensified their search for others who may have been involved. Pursuing what they call a network of terrorists after discovering what looks like a bomb workshop at the home of the suspected suicide bomber, Salman Abedi. Really suggesting that he probably did not act alone. According to experts, the details of the bomb caught in these pictures published by the New York Times show greater sophistication. Troubling for British officials who are also outraged that pictures were leaked. It's disrespectful to the people of Greater Manchester, but particularly to the families and those injured during this, our darkest hour. The mayor of Manchester telling ABC's Terry Moran he wants an apology from the U.S. government. And for now, U.K. officials say they will stop sharing intelligence with the U.S. involving the Manchester bombing. Britain's prime minister raising her concerns with President Trump at their meeting in Brussels. In Australia, a man who brutally beat his elderly neighbor to death and then sexually assaulted her has been sentenced to life in prison. His actions have seen ripples in the wider community as well as deeply affecting the victim's family. An emotional day here at the High Court. Jaden Strubin has been sentenced to 17, a minimum of 17 years non-parole for, for the murder of Shun Shu Tian. But more importantly, he's been sentenced to a minimum of 10 years preventive detention for the sexual violation that he's committed on her. The crown, this is significant because the Crown wanted preventive detention. They felt that he was at a high risk of reoffending and he's shown little remorse. And Justice Lang in sentencing agreed. He said uh, he'd shown little interest in being rehabilitated, that his crime sent ripples through the community that upset all old and vulnerable people living in their homes. And this is what he had to say to Strubent, passing sentence. Offending occurred in broad daylight. That is a time when all law-abiding citizens are entitled to feel safe in their homes. People in Ms Tian's position now won't trust strangers who come to their property. Like her daughter and son-in-law, they'll review their security arrangements. In short, it helps to destroy the very social fabric of our community. And we heard very strong personal statements from that daughter, Christine, and her husband, Jerry. They blame themselves for what happened to the uh, to uh, Miss Tian. They had gone to work. She was 69 years old. She stayed at home. She did their washing. She cooked their meals. She spoke very little English, and she came to live with them four years ago from China. They feel devastated, and Christine in particular is just torn apart by the fear that her mother must have experienced in her final moments and Justice Strubin, uh, sorry, and Justice Lang apo uh, apologised and, acknowledge, uh, and acknowledged their hurt. The, uh, in the wake of uh, the proceedings here, uh, the police have issued statements on behalf of the family and the police and the, the family uh, statement said that the family is pleased with the sentence, they feel justice has now been served and that their mother is finally resting in peace. Correction, the offence was in New Zealand and not Australia. 
Chukai Sports is next. Details after the break. Chukai Sports. Welcome to Chukai Sports. The PNG Kumuls will play the Australian Kangaroos and the Fiji Batis later this year in Suva. These matches will be a lead-up to the 2017 Rugby League World Cup. First up, it's Fiji against Papua New Guinea. The match will be played at the ANZ Stadium in Suva on the 14th of October. This will be a historic try contest which will see Fiji take on PNG in the first match before Australia takes on both PNG and Fiji. All matches will be played for 40 minutes. This will also be a good way for the three teams to prepare for the World Cup. It will be the Kangaroos' first match in Fiji. Kumul's coach Michael Marum says this is the first time and will be a wonderful experience for them. He says they will learn a lot during the 40 minutes played between both teams and will see where they need to improve before the World Cup. It will also be a good experience for the people of Fiji as they get to see some of the biggest stars of rugby league in action. Elijah Lavette, National MTV Sports. Sammy Redradra is in no rush to recommit to the Eels and plans to see how he settles into French rugby life before thinking of returning next season. Eels coach Brad Arthur confirmed the club had been in talks with Redradra's management about the winger returning next May when his season with Toulon finishes. Redradra stands to earn $900,000 after tax with Toulon, which is way more than most playmakers, let alone wingers in rugby league, can expect. The PNG Olympics Committee is currently preparing for this year's top three international events for Team PNG. These fixtures include the Youth Commonwealth Games, Asian Indoor and Mixed Martial Arts and Mini Pacific Games. Starting from July 19th to 23rd, this year's Youth Commonwealth Games will be held in the Bahamas. PNG Olympics Committee Deputy Secretary Andrew Lepani said PNG is looking forward to doing what they did in the last Commonwealth Youth Games in Samoa. Um, there are smaller teams going to those games, but they're also equally significant for PNG because we're sending our best athletes to compete against countries from around the world, and so we still place just as much importance on those games as we do for the Pacific Mini Games or the Commonwealth Games or the Olympic Games for that matter. We have a small team going to the Commonwealth Youth Games, young athletes, but we're looking to, to do what we did in Samoa in the last Commonwealth Youth Games where we won our very first medal at that level. Um, we've got some great young athletes who will be representing PNG again and we're looking forward to, to those games. The Youth Commonwealth Games will be followed by the Asian Indoor and Mixed Martial Arts Games in Ashgabat where a small contingent of Team PNG athletes will be sent come September. Um, and we also have the Asian Indoor Martial Arts Games coming up in September as well, which Team PNG will be attending for the first time, the very first time that Oceania countries have been invited to attend those games. Also, for the first time this year, Oceania countries will be taking part in Asian Indoor and Mixed Martial Arts event, and PNG Olympics Committee will be sending two sporting codes, weightlifting and swimming, to represent the country. We'll only have two sports going to these games, these first First games um, in weightlifting and swimming, but again, some exciting young athletes, our weightlifters in particular, um, they really rank quite highly in the Commonwealth and I know they're preparing well for the Gold Coast Commonwealth Games and so this will be a great event for them to test their, their level of um, performance against some of the best athletes from around Asia and Oceania. Most of the athletes taking part in these three international events may also find themselves being part of the 2018 Gold Coast Commonwealth Games come April next year. Godwin Eki, National MTV Sports. Sugar Sports continues after the break. Stay with us. True Kai Sports. Welcome back to True Kai Sports. To Rugby Union and the turmoil in PNG Rugby's governing body continues to, as two factions argue their rightful place as the board of the day. 
In a press conference today, PNG Rugby Football Union President Ben Frame stated that his board is recognized by World Rugby. World Rugby, on the other hand, has ordered an immediate arbitration to take place in order to put this matter to rest. Stephen Kami still insists the arbitration process put forward by World Rugby has not been transparent, saying the arbiter must be well versed with association acts and the constitution. The Kami faction will now wait till tomorrow, May 27th, and if the feedback is negative, they will withdraw from the arbitration process and file court proceedings with the National Court. Tomorrow night's SB Sports Awards will be held at the Crown Plaza Hotel in Port Moresby to mark 25 years of recognizing achievements in sports on and off the field. Tomorrow's special guest is NRL legend Wally Lewis. Godwin Eki reports. Since the inception of the SP Sports Awards in 1992, the organizing committee and its nominees will celebrate tomorrow night's SP Sports Awards in style as they prepare for the event's 25th anniversary. Each year, the SP Sports Awards recognizes the sweat and tears of individuals and groups for their sporting achievements. To celebrate this special occasion, guest speaker on the night will be rugby league greats and legend Wally Lewis who will be speaking to the nominees his words of encouragement and sharing experiences of his sporting achievements. After the public vote in the last four months a total of 37 athletes, coaches and programs were voted to be part of this year's SP Sports Awards recipients. Categories for the awards include male and female athlete of the year, junior male and female athlete of the year, Team of the Year, National Performance of the Year, Community Sports Initiative, Best Disability Athlete of the Year, and Sports Official of the Year. The other three categories include Sports Media Award, Sports Photo of the Year, and finally, the People's Choice Award. Four categories nominated to vie for the People's Choice Award are Male and Female Athlete of the Year, Team of the Year, and National Performance of the Year. Godwin Eki, National MTV Sports. That and Chukai Sports, the weather details after the break. Chukai Sports. Chukai Sports. Looking at the weather forecast for tonight and tomorrow in the southern region, Mostly fine and windy in Port Moresby and Daru, cloudy with a shower or two in Kerma. Mostly fine in Alutau and mostly fine although partly cloudy in Popundeta. In the Mamasi region, a shower or two in Leh, fine apart from isolated showers in Medang, Wewak and Vanimo. In the New Guinea Islands region, fine apart from isolated showers in Longo. Cloudy with a shower or two in Kavian, Kokopo, Rabaul and Buka, and cloudy with some showers and thunderstorms in Kimbe. And in the Highlands region, a shower or two, then early morning fog developing in all centres. And that's the news, sports and weather for Friday 26th May 2017. On behalf of the entire news team, enjoy your weekend. Good night. <laughs>